What's up you guys, Zoeb here from OneGlanceTrader.com and in this video I'll be sharing with you a Bollinger Bands trading strategy that actually works. Now I'm not going to show you a magical input settings or anything like that. What I'll be doing is using the Bollinger Bands as a reason to come to the chart and then overlaying a couple of technical confluence factors to aid in our trading decisions on whether to enter the trade. Now, if you guys are not familiar with the Bollinger Bands, it is a volatility indicator that uses a moving average and has an upper band and a lower band, predominantly two standard deviations apart. You can pick any moving average or any standard deviations, but what I've got on my screen now is the traditional 20 period moving average and two standard deviations above to get the upper Bollinger Band and two standard deviations to get the lower Bollinger Band. Now, one of the most popular ways to trade the Bollinger Band strategy is similar to an RSI or any other oscillator. When price um, gets overextended um, and uh, closes or touches the upper Bollinger Band or the lower Bollinger Band, you then are looking for price to reverse and mean revert back to the mean. A good example would be at this level over here, you can see price closes outside of the band, pushes up a little bit, and then eventually then reverts back to the 20 period moving average. However, what you can see is, is every time price does go, uh, touches or goes outside one of these bands, it doesn't always, always reverse. So you can take this example over here is when price closes outside of the upper Bollinger Band, you're expecting price to reverse down, but you can see it continues this trend for a while and then eventually starts to um, reverse. So I would say probably about 80 to 90% of the time, it does mean revert, but that 10% of the time where you're wrong, uh, depending on your risk to reward and all that kind of good stuff in there, that um, is what using that as a standalone strategy will make it unprofitable. So what can we do to overlay other technical factors to make this into a profitable strategy that actually works? So the first thing is I like to do is overlay uh, the 200 EMA. So the 200 EMA is allows me to determine the trend and I always wanna go with the trend. So as you can see in this price action over here is that price is above for the most part by well, this point over here <coughs> is um, above the 200 EMA. So that means that I'm only looking uh, for opportunity, sorry, <coughs> when price goes outside or touches the lower Bollinger Band. Because again, we're looking to mean revert and continue with the trend. Now you're filtering out all of these upper, upper touch signals, which you can see depending on your trading strategy, more than likely you would have lost more than you would have gained inside this particular issue. So, <clears throat> so what I like to do is use the 200 EMA. And the reason I like to use the 200 EMA is because it's a slow enough moving average to take into account two, three time frames higher. Because we're looking at 200 bars on 30 minute chart in this example, it will take into account the one hour or the four hour and probably little bits um, of the uh, of the daily because we're looking at over 200 bars worth of uh, 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 worth of data, so that gives me that takes into account all the long term. So you're going with the long term trend. However, the 200 EMA, as I said, is a very slow indicator, um, and you know you could get massive down down trends while you're still above price. Uh, for for example, so what I also like to use is the uh, Ichimoku. Uh, indicator and I like to use the uh, Kumo, uh, Kumo cloud feature and again I've got um, a video on the Ichimoku and I built an indicator <coughs> around the Kumo cloud breakout strategy which you can find the link is inside the description so I've only set this indicator up on the default settings just showing the Kumo cloud and in in its basic entirety it prices above the cloud you are trending upwards if prices below the cloud you are trending uh, downwards. So what we've got over here is you've not only got the 200 EMA, but you've also got the cloud as well, uh, as you can see, which is a, most of the time is a lot closer to price, um, which then gives you that current time frame trend is also inside that direction. So a perfect example would be over here 
in this area here, you're above the 200 um, EMA, but you're below the cloud. So that is why I use that <coughs> as an additional filter to make sure um, we are looking um, not only on the short term trend, but the long term trend. So adding those two er elements in there means that we are only looking to take, in this example, in an uptrend, lower Bollinger Band uh, signals when price is above the uh, 200 EMA and also above the cloud. So if we look at price action at the moment in this situation over here, we have got three elements of where that occurs. That occurs once over here, once over here, and you could argue that price is, um, um, that price is in the cloud and doesn't really constitute as a signal. So we'll ignore that one and we'll just look at focus on these two signals over here, one here and one over here. Is that good enough to get into an entry? Um, maybe, maybe, yeah. But what else can we add on top of this to give us additional confidence factors? So if I just add in, uh, for example, so we've got the 200 EMA um, and then we've got the Ichimoku cloud. So we've got two two additional technical uh, indicators on there that are all pointing inside the right direction. And then we've also got a, a Bollinger Band lower touch. So you can see at this level over here, when this red bar hits here, we have got there. And the thing is, the beauty about using something like TradingView is that you don't have to sit and watch a chart all the time. What you can do in TradingView is, is that if you go to the Bollinger Band and then click these three dots and say add alert, you can say um, whether it, the basis is the moving average, the upper band or the lower band. So let's just say the lower band and every time it crosses, um, once per, and then you can do it once it touches, bar close, once per bar, once per minute, however you want to set it. And then if you've got the app, I use the app because it's just a push notification on my phone or you can get an email, whatever you want, you can create that alert and that alert has been set. So every time that price hits the lower Bollinger Bands, you'll get an alert. And then let's just say we were here, I get an alert on my phone, I can see it's above the 200 EMA, above the cloud, Yes, okay, now I can start looking at something else. So you can see how quickly, if you set your charts up, and again, I've got a video on TradingView and how to set up charts, and I'll link to that inside the description <clears throat> of how you can set yourself up to spend less time looking at the charts. So we have got this red bar that closed outside here. We're above the 200 e uh, EMA, and we're above the uh, Ichimoku cloud. Great. So what's the next thing that I personally look at? Next thing I look at is where is price in relation to natural support and resistance? So natural support and resistance, in my view, are round number psychological levels. And I have built, well, I haven't built, Alistair, who you guys should know, hopefully from the channel, has built the OGT round numbers indicator for MT4, which again, I'll link to that tutorial video inside the description. Um, <coughs> and what it does, it plots round number levels at zero, zero and at five, zero levels. And you can also do custom levels as well. So, but in TradingView, there is a um, indicator called round numbers above and below. So if you show that, what it does is it, it draws those lines here. And what you can see here, in this example here, you can see that price has touched a round number level. And as you, as I went through in the tutorial video for the OGT round numbers indicator, especially when you're trend trading, you are looking for pullbacks in the trend at a round number level. That's how I like to trade. So this is a great signal for me um, on there. So we can see, we can add that now to our list is price touched round number level. So again, now you can see how we're overlaying different uh, elements or confluence factors on top of this to tell us a story of, what, of what's going on. So that's great, so that's great. So we've got that element on there. The next bit I like to look at, especially if I'm going with the trend, is to, to see if there is any hidden divergence. And if you're new to hidden divergence, again, there'll be a link in the description to go into hidden divergence. Um, but what we're looking for here is bullish hidden divergence. And one of the ways I do that is utilizing 
the MACD and, uh, and, st and stochastic. So I've just added the MACD on here. And what you can see here is that you take the last low, which is here. So that's where price, uh, the MACD is showing here. And if the MACD should really mimic what price is doing. So you can see that uh, price then starts to make a high over here, which it does here, and then drops back down into this level over here. And so you expect the MACD to create a higher low. But what happens here is, is when price gets to this level, you can see if I do that, if I hover over that bar, you can see that the MACD is already below the other low. So therefore price has made a lower low. So hidden bullish divergence is where price is making higher lows and the MACD or an oscillator is making lower lows. You see that? And again, this is a, it's a tough concept to get your head around, especially if you're new to trading or new to the concept of divergence. I strongly recommend that you uh, take the uh, tutorial video on divergence uh, inside the description if you want to learn more. But basically, this setup is showing bullish, diver, uh, bullish hidden divergence, which is a trend continuation pattern. So again, if we add that on here of bullish hidden divergence, on there and then what I'm also going to do is show what that looks like on the stochastics as well and the stochastics I think hopefully should give us a bit of a clearer picture so we've got um, that low again over here which is this this low here price makes a high comes back down and when price makes this low over here you can see that price is around this level over here and therefore, it made lower low, lower high, hidden bullish divergence. And what you can also see is you don't take the trade straight away as soon as you see this. We need a confirmation signal on when to enter this trade because the this could be a trend reversal and then price could start going down there. <coughs> so then we wait as we go on a few subtle bars. As you can see, prices um, reach an area of, res uh, well, support in this in this instance at this round number level and now you can also see that if i move my thing out of the way is that the stochastics is now around this bar here has now got into oversold territory so now we've got another layer of confirmation that <coughs> price is in and overbought so stochast uh, stock oversold on here so for me i've got a number of confluence factors to show that price is in a good position to reverse so if we go back and have a quick look on here we're above the 200 ema we're above the ichimoku cloud we've got a lower bollinger band touch so basically a pullback inside the trend um prices at around number level and has consolidated and is using it as support We've got bullish hidden divergence, price making lower highs, and the, and the stochastic oscillator and the MACD making uh, lower lows. Uh, so we've got bullish hidden divergence, and then uh, the stochastics is uh, oversold. Now, there are, in my view, there are two ways to enter this trade. The first way to enter the trade, or the kind of the simpler way, is to use the stochastics crossover. So what you can see here is that there's two versions where the stochastics crossed over. Um, hopefully if I bring this down, it won't allow me with this thing, is it was around this level over here. So you would have got in at this bar over here, you would have had a bit of drawdown and then price continues to make its way up. That is the easy easiest option to get into this trade. The second way to get into this trade is looking for a price action candlestick pattern in the bullish direction so that will either be a bullish pin bar or a bullish engulfing bar and again you can do this using my ogt price action indicator again absolutely free link it inside the description to go and enter into this trade and this is how i would have entered the trade so if you look at this thing and i'll zoom in slightly on this thing so you guys can kind of see if i zoom back out a bit more is price was hovering at this level and then you can see this big green bar this big green bar 
has engulfed the whole range of this little red bar over over here. You can zoom in a bit more like that. You can see that that range has completely engulfed, and that is a bullish engulfing pattern. It's a two stick candle uh, candlestick pattern. And then, as you can see, that price then, you know, started started to trend upwards. And that is one of the classic candlestick patterns that I normally see around upper and lower Bollinger Bands as the signal to kind of it's it's reversed. But we are using the long term trend, the short term trend, overbought, oversold on stochastics, bullish hidden divergence, all of this stuff to give us a probability that price wants to continue to go higher. And in this particular example, very textbook example doesn't work 100% of the time which is why you need risk management in place but hopefully it gives you that view on how you can filter out the upper and lower Bollinger Bands reversal traditional reversal strategy by using this concept so if we now go and look at this one over here so again price would have come in and clipped it probably at this uh, at this green candle over here you'll come to your chart Price is above the 200 EMA and price is um, above the uh, Ich Ichimoku cloud, uh, which is good. <coughs> if you can see where it's printed, it's just not going to be an exact science, but it's just there. Price nearly went to this psychological round number level, um, this uh, the zero zero level, again, giving us another confirmation. Now we're going to look at the um, uh, d divergence. Now, there's two things I need to look at this here. If you look at it from a stochastics point of view, we've got a low here and the low here. And these two lows, this second low is higher than this low. So there's no bullish divergence over here. What we do have, though, and it'd be clearer to see in a second in the MACD, is we starting to have bearish, regular bearish uh, divergence, which is basically a reversal um, uh a reversal signal that price wants to go down this is where and again i'll get the macd up so you can kind of see that uh for you let me get rid of the stochastics definitely didn't want to add another symbol uh, macd so you can see here that at this level price is making highs and the macd makes a high the Price makes another high. MACD is actually making a lower high. Um, and then you've got another high here. And the MACD does make a higher high. Um, and then you've got... I uh, know, well, this is where we're going into. Sorry, when we completely over, missed it. I thought we were looking at this signal. Um, as you can see here, when price gets to this level over here, you can see that price... Let's do it with this trend line. Price is making higher highs, and the MACD is making lower highs, which is signifying exhaustion inside the market, and price wants to uh, price wants to either retrace or or fully reverse. So that is one thing that is actually gone against us, and I'm just going to quickly put the stochastics back on to see if we were, and I'm pretty sure we were. Um, oversold yeah we're, we're oversold as well so if i get this back up on this signal here we're above the 200 uh, ema we're above the ichimoku cloud we've got a bollinger band lower touch price is well price is near ish a, a round number level because it did touch well i don't know i had to i don't think it did but you know it's close enough we don't have this but we have the stochastics oversold now the things going against us that I'm not happy with this particular situation is that we have got regular bearish divergence. So that's something we need to be mindful of here. But we do have one, two, three, four, five things going inside our favor. Now this is where risk management comes into play. Now in the first signal, would I have taken this signal? Yes, 100% all day long. How much would I have risked? I probably would have done my mass, max risk per trade. Let's say it was 2%. I'd put 2% on this trade. Knowing me, I like to go for a one-to-one -one, um, trade. Let's say I made my 2% return. 
of that particular trade. Then you've got this over here. Now, <coughs> is this worth a 2% trade? For me, it's not. And the reason why is two things. One is, <coughs> sorry, you've got the regular bearish divergence. And second reason is we are quite late inside a trend. Not to say a trend can't continue to further, but there's more probability that price could actually feel like, you know, range and then and then reverse in this in this scenario over here. So what I want to go in the trade because I've got a lot of things going for me, but I've got um, one or two things going against me. So therefore, I'll risk one percent, half a percent, one and a half percent, whatever it is, but something lower than what I did over here. Because on here, we just had a breakout of the Ichimoku cloud, um, and this is its first retrace uh, since its breakout of the cloud. And again, I didn't mention it before, but again, I'm going a bit more deeper into other sections. I want to try to keep it as simple as, as simple as I can. My point is, is I would have taken this second trade as well, but I would have risked less. Yes, it worked out. I would have made one to one, one to two, you know, how, however much you would have reward to risk, depending on your strategy. But... I would have risked less because there were things that I weren't happy with, but there were a lot more things I was happy with. So I will, yes, I'll get into the trade, and but I'll risk less. So this stops you from not getting involved into trades where you should be taking trades, um, but just risking less if some of these things weren't happening. I would say, for me, these four are a must. We have to be above the 200 EMA. We have to be above the Ichimoku cloud. We obviously has to touch the uh, Bollinger Band, but I like price to be near or on a round number level. And then divergence will determine the factors of if it's 2%, 1%, or half, half a percent per trade. So I really hope that you found this trading strategy useful Again, comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. Really interested in understanding where your head's at with this or what is your favorite confluence technical indicators that you like to put together. What I've got on the screen right now is I've got my thumbnail of the OGT round numbers indicator uh, and also uh, my divergence playlist, which goes into divergence in a lot more detail and my Ichimoku breakout indicator as well. Again, absolutely free. Link is in the description. Like this video, subscribe, click the thumbnails, and I shall see you in the next video.